Good morning. Happy Father's Day to you all, especially fathers. Good to have you here. Yeah, that's right. And then, uh, of course, today we uh, are here in church, not only to be with fathers, but also to be with God, our Father, who will instruct us in his word. All right. And this is the summer season called Trinity season for us. Some call it Pentecost season. Either way, it's marked by green. Um, hopefully, we'll see more green around us. We had a little bit of rain. We need some more. But same, so the same in the church. It's the season of growing. So all summer, we'll be hearing instruction from Jesus uh, to, to grow in faith by his giving. So let's begin with a hymn of invocation. God loved the world so that he gave him 571. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. I love you, O Lord, my strength. For you save a humble people. This God, his way is perfect. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King,
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, since you never fail to help and govern those whom you nurture in your steadfast fear and love, work in us a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Come, O oh children, listen to me. What man is there who desires life Keep your tongue from evil Turn away from evil and do good The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He keeps all his bones. Affliction will slay the wicked. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Come, O oh children, listen to me. The epistles from Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself a new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When one of those who reclined at table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. We sing our hymn of the day, O Lord, look down from heaven, behold, a Reformation hymn from Luther. It's printed on an insert, 260 from the old Lutheran hymnal. There are, I only have four on the page, though. Okay. Are there six on the screen? There are six stanzas. Well, there's only four on the page. Okay. So we're going to sing the four stanzas on the sheet. There we go.
Next time we'll sing the other two stanzas. <laughs> All right. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. The Lord is having a supper. You are all invited today to his table. Today, Jesus gives you his body to eat and his blood to drink for the remission of all your sins. You eat and drink salvation. Everything he earned for you by his perfect life, he delivers to you into your mouth. Everything he paid for by his suffering and death, he gives to you into you today. Everyone is invited, everyone. Not just some people, not just holy people. Even we sinners are invited. All. No one is left out. So he sends the servants out. Come, everything is ready. Then the RSVPs come in from his people. I'd love to come, but I have bought a field. Please excuse me. Can't make it. I just got five brand spanking new genuine 8032 pairs of oxen and I want to test drive these bad boys. Another came in, I have married a girl, honeymoon, you know. All these answers end the same. The invitation, his invitation, is rejected. He is rejected. Something ranked higher than the feast. Something meant more, was more important, needed more attention from them. Today, Jesus speaks this parable against the children of Israel who just wanted something more than him. They went their own way. They rejected the Father and his Messiah, his Christ. Jesus wasn't enough for them. They had better things to do. But let's not just condemn the children of Israel. Let's look at ourselves. We are entrusted with the gospel of Christ we know that God's love is seen in his giving up of his son for our salvation. Salvation is not by what we do or don't do, but solely in the cross of Christ. And faith receives that salvation in his gifts and his word that we are saved. But there it is, God's word. We tune it out. We shut down during the sermons, if we can hear it at all, contemplating other things. We don't want these sermons to be too long. They have to fit within our schedule. Our phones are more exciting. Did you remember to shut them off before church? The latest buzz, that notification from the internet, or maybe it's the buzz of gossip around the church. We're thinking about the brunch we have lined up later, or trying to remember not to forget to call dad on this Father's Day. Or perhaps we have repairs around the farm that we've neglected and they're on our mind. But the Lord will not suffer himself to be second in your world. He won't suffer himself to be second to anything. He won't compete for your attention. He's either important to you or he isn't. And if he's in the second spot, he considers it simply an RSVP in the negative. The next time you have something better to do than to come to the services in God's house, Contemplate that the Lord Jesus has given you your entire body, soul, and indeed your entire being, 168 hours a week. He asks of you only one of those hours, a little bit more, and you can't even give him that. One hour out of 168 is too much for you. Do you have something that ranks higher, more important, something? What do you think is more than his word? So what does he do? He sends out his servants. Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. There he is inviting you again. His people reject him and he goes out and sends out invites again. He brings you to his table. He forgives you. He has mercy. We are the poor, the crippled, and the blind and the lame in this parable. We are the ones who get the invitation after his own people rejected him the Gentiles, if you like. And Christ himself takes upon himself our poverty. He takes our infirmities on himself. He enlightens us. He heals us. By his holy life, he, the holy of lives, makes us holy. By his suffering, 
his bitter suffering and death, he redeems us, buys us back from our sins, even from our rejection and despising of his word. And he goes out to the waysides and the roadside, even to two miles out of town, Sherman Center, or throughout the county of Sheboygan, and drags us back. The Greek word says he compels them to come in. Like a father who takes away a dangerous thing from his child, he compels us out of our sin and then gives to us, even us who are focused on everything but him, he gives to us eternal life again. Dear friends, the Lord's gifts, his word, his baptism, and his supper aren't just a little part of your lives. It's more than just an hour plus each week. Nor is it something you do to meet people or to hear something positive about yourself, an inspirational message. No, the gifts are for faith. Faith flows from the gifts received here. Faith receives Christ's life and cross in his word and sacraments where he promised. Faith lives from the water and the word in the baptismal font, lives from the word of God, lives from the bread and wine, which is the very body and blood of Christ. After all, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Each day you are raised up again, raised in his gifts and enlightened again to live a life for someone else other than yourself. You are given to be Christ for others giving your life for their life. So leave behind where you think your life is, the ups and downs of what is here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, your new field is important. Your new pair of oxen can be tested out tomorrow. Your bride is important too, but why don't you take her to the banquet as well? So come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of understanding. That word of wisdom that we heard today was given by Solomon to his son. The chief responsibility of fathers is to teach his children God's word. And then all the other gifts that fathers give follow. And the thanks we give for fathers today then is for them heeding the charge of the scriptures. And is also the charge echoed in our small catechism. Wie sie ein Hausvater seinem Haus ein Feltig. For Halton Zoll. Some of you remember that, maybe. Or if you prefer, as the fathers of the house should teach it in a simple way to his household. The house father teaches his children God's word. All earthly gifts come and go, but God's word endures forever. And that gift from our fathers also then lasts forever. Teach your children what is important. Your grandchildren, too by word and example, by how you spend your time, not just in front of the television or computer, but in the Lord's words, praying, praising God, and giving thanks for what he has done for you in Christ. What better gift could you give them? For in a thousand million years from now, as you feast on the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom that has no end, whatever it is that you thought was more important this day, I promise you won't be. It simply won't be as important to you as what your Lord Jesus did to save you and those to whom you delivered his word. All that will matter, all that matters now is the cross of Christ. His death for you made right with God. His life is your life now and forever. So today the Lord is having his supper and here's the gospel. You are invited. Come and taste the bread of God. Come and receive his life and salvation. Come and eat and drink for the forgiveness of your sins. Because blessed is everyone who eats the bread of God. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God,
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give you thanks that through the Holy Word you have called us to your great supper. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may not hear your word without fruit, but prepare ourselves rightly for your kingdom and not allow ourselves to be hindered by any worldly care. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, bless our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and our pastor, whom you have sent in the footsteps of your Son to preach his peace. May they faithfully and boldly proclaim it to those who are near and to those who are far off. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, on this day we thank you for the gift of our earthly fathers. Bless all fathers that they would care for their families, lead their children to Jesus, and reflect your love. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, keep our tongues from evil and our lips from speaking deceit. Turn us from evil to do good and to seek and to pursue peace, that as your children we may see many good days according to your promises. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, keep us from surprise and dismay when the world hates us for Christ's sake. Do not let us turn from your love to embrace another way. Let our love be not of the, in word and talk, but in deed and in truth, according to your word. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, sustain those who suffer mental illness. Let them know that you are near to the brokenhearted and you save the crushed in spirit. Uphold them in hope until you deliver them out of all their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, we give you thanks that through baptism you have made us all brothers and sisters in Christ. In this community of faith, we have heard your loving word for us and for all creation. We have been fed and forgiven at your holy table and called to be witnesses to your gospel to all those you place in our lives. We pray now that you would grant your peace to all those attending the 40th biennial LWML convention in the days ahead, especially be with Barb as she travels there. Guide Barb and all those by your word, renew them by your spirit and protect them as they travel, make their way safe and their homecoming joyful. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you bless us with many and various rich gifts. We rejoice this week with those celebrating their earthly birth, John, Linda, Jeff, Kyle, Alexia, and Paul. We rejoice with those celebrating their new birth by water and the word, especially Annika, Tom, Jerome, Aislinn, Julie, Chad, Linda, Elaine, and Amanda. We rejoice with those celebrating your gift of marriage, including Bev, Gary and Barb, Chad and Jolene, Chris, pray for all the households of our church that they would be blessed by your word, Tim and Kim, Jerry and Marcella, Emma, Deb, Jim, Matt and Vicki. For all this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we intercede to you on behalf of all those in any need, especially praying for Dasha and her family as they look for new housing. This good gift of daily bread, we ask that you would bless her and her family with. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, give comfort to the sick and lonely and to those who mourn, and hear the prayers of all who are in any need, especially Dale, Pam, Joe, Melanie, Kelsey, Christopher, Marcy, Brad, Gus, Eileen, Ron, Doug, Bev, Joan, Pat, Wendell, Darlene, and Jim. You are the Lord who feeds and nourishes us with your wisdom. Help us to turn to you in faith and find our every want and need answered in your gracious favor. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, through Christ's blood you bring us near, and in his flesh you break down the wall of hostility between us. Bestow his peace upon us and between us as we commune today. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, O Lord, you have multiplied our days and added eternal years to our lives through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. 
Sustain us in this truth when our days and years draw to a close, and renew us in the hope of eternal life. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to greet one another with the peace of Christ, and if there is any of those who you sinned against or have sinned against you, this would be a great time to reconcile with each other, forgive each other, in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. The Lord be Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna 
Lord in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna on him, the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God, you take away
We stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. Calls his promises, his people forth. Joy with shouts of thanks, giving Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
may be seated. The men are coming to get me. I felt like they're, all right. Not going to usher me out. Okay, it's good. Uh, Pollinator Garden rescheduled for Wednesday at 6. I think it was raining and uh, people couldn't be there last week. So if you can help. What's that? Monday, the 19th. Yep, that's what it says on the sheet. What did I say? Wednesday. Wednesday. I meant Monday. Read the sheet, not what I say. All right. Uh, there's other opportunities for volunteer there with the, with the music in the park and the picnic as well. Uh, let's see. Barb's going to the convention this week, God willing, right? So blessings on your, on your work there. The LWML is a remarkable organization, an auxiliary of our, our church body uh, in the just the sheer volume of missionary work that they can support, um, even with those, those pennies, right, that you gather in the little boxes, right? Amazing. Uh, let's see, what else did I forget? I forgot something I was going to tell you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right, Dorothy. Uh, I can't remember what it was. All right, we have a Bible study here in a few minutes, so if you can join us for that, I encourage you to do so. Otherwise, the Lord be with you all, and we'll see you soon.